seconds. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Red Devils podcast. This is the Manchester United versus Newcastle reaction. Manchester United 4, Newcastle 1. There's really nothing sweeter on Christmas Day or on Boxing Day, rather. There's no sweeter Christmas present than us actually winning a game that I think a lot of us thought we wouldn't win. Um, we drew to Everton. We lost to Whiteford. And now we are back with another episode reacting to this team. And uh, I think once again, I, I can speak for everyone when I say that this is a really good result. It's a, it's a confusing result, but a good one nevertheless. Um, how are you guys feeling after today's game? <clears throat> you know, supporting United is like having bipolar, you know. That's, you know. I said that earlier in the group. <laughs> I was super upset and then I was super happy. And then, you know, I was kind of getting bored towards the end, but I can understand it. So yeah, mixed emotions. Yeah, I'm. Oh, yeah. I'm just happy that Ole has finally opened his football for dummies handbook, and learned the football basics. I'm so happy we didn't play on the counter. I thought it was a really good performance, possession wise. We had 70 percent possession. How long has it been since so much possession and actually played well with 17 and shots on target? Oh, with 17 shots and about nine or so on target. So I thought it was a really, really good performance. Yeah, look, we saw some attacking positive football from Manchester United today. We saw them all work hard on and off the ball. There really wasn't much to complain about in terms of the performance. Yes, they're playing against a Newcastle team who we should be beating anyways. But considering where we've been in the last few weeks, I think it's a good result. It really is. Um, not just because we won 4-1, not just because we got the three points, not just because we're closer to top four now, but... It's a really symbolic result yeah. because of how we played and the manner in which we scored the goals. Even even Greenwood's goal, like, that goal doesn't happen if Martial doesn't pressure. Like, mm -hmm. the defense doesn't make that mistake if we don't play a high line. Mm -hmm. So, and Martial yeah. with the cool head and the young chip. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I think, yes. I think what we saw is, is that... Yeah. If you, if you pressure, the counter will take care of itself. You play position football and you pressure because teams will always lose the ball and you always have, have an opportunity to counter. So we've got the best of both worlds. We're playing possession, we're moving the ball quickly and we got to see a few counters which were stronger. So it was a really good performance. Yeah, I, I've been away for a while, but the last show we did, I vividly remember saying that there's two teams on a football pitch. So obviously when one team wins the ball, they're going to go the other way. That doesn't mm. necessarily mean that team is set up to counter-attack. It just mm. means they counter-attack because that's how football works. And just because a team is out of position, it does not mean they're sitting back or parking the bus. It means they're defending because they're out of position. <laughs> when a team is parking the bus, it's when they blatantly play a really low line. And, and, and the same with counter-attacking. Um, yeah. I think it's great that we didn't like we didn't look like a team that was parking the bus today. We actually pressed for the ball, yeah. and even though we did play on, off the counter, we created a lot of chances through build-up play as well, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, yeah, in terms of gameplay analysis, I think uh, I, I think Ole has done well today, but I I still can't give him all the credit because I still feel like a big part of it was just individual brilliance. Um, yeah, maybe I'm. Being Maybe I'm being unfair because at the end of the day, like even at a Real Madrid, when Ronaldo scores a hat trick, you know, mm. it doesn't just happen. The the goals have to come from somewhere, and the the assists have to come from somewhere, and yeah. there has to be a working system for a team to go and yeah. win a game. But you know, it's a weird I one. Feel, it's a weird one. I feel the biggest part. Yes, there wasn't individual brilliance, but I feel the biggest part was the intensity. Like the intensity never dropped. Even at the start, when it kind of looked like we were setting up for the counter, the intensity from get go was always good. So I think that's the biggest part of today. Yeah. Well, you know, I would disagree with that in the first ten minutes or so. But yeah, it definitely from the first half and the second half, the intensity throughout, I would say like seventy-five of the ninety minutes from Manchester mm -hmm. United was brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, and we actually finally came back when we went one 0 down. Yeah, the re the reaction was good, but like I I knew there was going to be immediate reaction because like of how early it was in the game. Yeah, like, it was a very early goal. 
Yeah, yeah, like Manchester United do tend to dominate the early game or do tend to create a lot of chances early game. The problem in the past is we just don't take those early chances. Today we did. And what's more surprising is we did it when we went 1-0 down, you know, which you don't expect with this team because I'm sure I speak for everybody when we say we don't trust this team anymore. Yeah. But yeah. that might change, you know. They gave us a Christmas present. You know, Ollie was like, here you go. Yeah, I'm hey, just... hey, whether you agree or not, I'm happy. Um, mm-hmm. This is a Christmas yeah. present for me. I, I watched wow. my team yeah. play another team at the park. Sorry, uh, you can say. Team. Yeah, no, it, I was. I think it's the midfield's best performance. Uh, that might be outrageous, but I think this is the midfield's best performance. Maybe not individually, but as a collective, I think it was the best performance. <laughs> it was like it was. I, I don't know how you could deny that because like. We dominated the middle of the park. We dominated in defense. De Gea didn't really have much to do the whole game. And going forward, United always looked like there was a goal in them, you know. Mm. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what more you would want as a United fan, you know. Yes, we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. Yes, we should look ahead to the next few games. But, like, mm. you can't you can't live your life as a football fan or as a sports fan constantly being negative. You have to, especially after where United have been. You know, it's Christmas. Yeah. It's the festive season. Just, you know, take it. Just take the win and be happy. <laughs> you know, um, that, that's just my opinion. Anyways, are you guys ready to move on to the player ratings? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Let's do this. In goal, David De Gea, what are we giving him out of 10? You know, I didn't think he had much to do, you know. I yeah. still think he's yeah. not at his best yet. I still think he's lacking confidence. I thought he was pretty average, so I'm going to give him a six. I think a six yeah. is fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah, six is fair. He didn't have to do much. But when the, um, he had to do something, it didn't disappoint. So I'll give him a six as well. Yeah. Um, Aaron wan Mm-hmm. My boy think, Manny put in a cross. I was so happy. He put in a cross <laughs> directly on the head. I was smiling. I was gassed, you know. You know, you know both again. full backs created a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but we'll get to, I'm going to get to Luke Shaw. I'm just holding it yeah, yeah. you know. Just, so, yeah, but yeah, my, my Spider-Man performed today. Damn. I'm going to give one Saka a seven. Yeah. Rito, what are you giving me? Yeah, I was, I was considering a six and a half, but then now that I think about it, his defensive play was decent, and his attacking play, I think, is the best we've seen. So, yeah, I think I'll go seven. All right, I'm a, I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him an eight because actually no, I'm gonna give him a nine <laughs> because I don't think he did anything wrong. Jeez, I'm gonna give him a nine because people complain about Aaron Wan-Bissaka going forward. He created a goal. He was perfect. He was flawless defensively as he always is. So yeah. he was almost perfect for me. Therefore, he deserves a nine. Like I didn't. Maybe I'm, I'm I'm being too generous here, but I didn't see him do anything wrong. Yeah, I just don't want to give him a high yeah. because you know, like, you know, I tend to like you know if we can see the goal, you know, I don't yeah. want to just yeah. I think but then it wasn't his fault though. So it, was yeah, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault. But like you know, we still can see this. So. Uh-huh. I think defensively, it's just such a high standard that when we don't see someone take him on, it's kind of like he didn't do much. But it was clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have to do mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Why would you Even want to go down from Basaka's side? Where there was a Newcastle player turning on the touchline, and he, like, he almost he's, he almost wrapped his left leg around the guy. <laughs> like, where you going? Pulling the Spider Man. Like, this guy how... that extends. He did leg extends. Off balance, even. Oh my God. My man's clean. I love, love my favorite Victor, right back. Victor Lindelof is the next player. What, what are we giving him out of ten? Uh, no, to be honest, I didn't think he also had much to do. You know, I don't blame him for the goal, but. Uh... And he didn't really offer much, so I'm just gonna give it average save six. You know, yeah. You know what we saw today? We saw what happens with the defense if the midfield plays well. They don't have to do much because the ball doesn't really get upside that much. <laughs> so, yeah, much. there's not a bad thing. That's, that's a that's a big positive actually. So, at six and a half. Like I didn't see him do anything wrong really, but he didn't do anything spectacular. So six and a half. It's Christmas. I'm giving him a seven. Harry Maguire. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I was going to bash him. I was going to bash him. But his second half performance, it, it resurrected him. Ah, it resurrected him. 
you know, my man, when he took that one shot, I, thought, I had Vincent Company back in my head when he won the Premier League last season. Mm, yeah. Uh, he had a header, didn't go in. Who knows when he's going to score a header for us. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give him... I was, Let me put it this way. I was going to give him a five. But then because of his second half performance, I'm going to give him a six. That's crazy. A six. He rescued his performance to a six. Which is, you know, it's it's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, I, I had my doubts about Harry today as well. You know, but... Yeah, it, it's Christmas. He showed yeah, so. he showed some it's leadership fun. today. You know, he was wearing the armband. He said after he, he let that goal slip, you know, he said didn't just drop all the way yeah. down, went forward. He, you know, he showed something. But you know, the thing about Harry Maguire is he's one of those special players where, like, and I don't I don't mean to go up Harry Maguire's arse or anything like this because you know I'm not a Harry Maguire fan, but. He's just one of those players that no matter what's happening, even as a defender, he's just always in the game, you know? Like, it's very rare that I go through a United game and think, where the hell was Harry Maguire? Like, he's always there. He's always involved. Good or bad, he's always involved. But anyways... yeah, yeah. I think Harry's a quality player, but I feel like he's not ready to be captain. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to call him into a room and say what's going on and have a one-on-one chat with him and ask him if he's ready for such a big such a big role because I don't think he is I think it's it's weighing down on him and it's affecting his performances because that's yeah. what was happening with that goal like what was Harry Maguire doing there so I'll give him a six as of yeah, yeah we just, definitely just need to just... like I, I I can completely understand that but I feel like when it comes to captaincy and these sorts of things it's not that simple because I feel like I feel like a player like Harry Maguire wants to be captain of Manchester United and it's very difficult to strip him of the captaincy when it's something he wants to do. I don't think it's something he was forced to do or something that he was given and, you know, like he wasn't given a choice. Mm. But that's just that's just my two cents. We'll, we'll never know. because we're not in the sure, I just don't think he's ready for it. Maybe sometime in the future, I don't think he's ready. To be honest, I think our captain came on at the beginning of the second half. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's be honest. Yeah, like... He probably isn't ready, and that's uh, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying he is ready. I completely agree he's not ready. But I'm pretty sure Ole has had a chat with him, and he's he in his mind he thinks he's ready. And I don't blame him. That shows a lot of character. Like I, I, like that's what I'm saying. I think he wants to be the captain, even though he's not ready. And like as a coach, you know, you either gotta you gotta strip him of it, or you gotta trust yeah. him. And that's, and you know, that might be harsh, but like you know, for me. Personally, I would I wouldn't play Maguire for the next game or something, you know. I'd, mm. I I want to see Axel play, and I think Lindelof hasn't deserved think, to get dropped. So I think they can do some good. I think they can do some good, like a game off. It'll help him. Yeah, yeah. I think for one game we can see things where they Lindelof and see how they how they how they gel. Yeah, but then you know if if we consider an early goal like Lindelof, I, I feel like he'll lose his head, and then Axel's young. But anyways, we're going off topic. Um, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw. What are we giving? My man did, but, you know, going forward, you know, defense field also pretty solid. So I mm. think I'm going to give Luke Shaw a seven as well. You know, you put in a cross, no one home. That's just the story of our lives. So yeah, I'm going to give him a seven. Yeah, like, he didn't so, do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. I don't see how I can give one person. Okay, one person assisted. But, yeah, I'll, I'll be generous sure. and say seven as well. Shaw did pass to assist. Did he assist? He passed he to the passed. assist. Pereira okay, okay. literally just touched yeah, no. it. And then he didn't really do much wrong. So I think he deserves a seven. Yeah. I'm going to give him an eight. Not because it's Christmas, but because I think he genuinely deserves an eight. Because, like, you know, if somebody did nothing wrong, then means they were perfect. But, like, we don't give tens out here for free and we don't get nines for free, you know. So I think an eight is fair. Mm-hmm. But uh, moving on into the midfield, Fred. Ooh. I think we'll start with Fred. My boy. My boy Fred the Red. Man, yeah, you know what? I've got no complaints about him today. I love the way he played. You know, I love Fred. He's developing. He's, you know, he's, every game, it just seems like he's getting better and better and better. And I love him. So I'm going to give Fred an 8. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's very... You know, defensive, he's been... solid, going up, solid, 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like the... The movement of the ball and on the ball is just, it's just great. The intensity is just great. Like, he's been one of our best players in the last few weeks, so I think he deserves a seven. 
Yeah, they, I can see a seven. You know, I'm not going to go as far as saying he did nothing wrong because I don't think he was perfect. So I think a seven is fair. But hey, it's Christmas. I'll give him an eight. <laughs> to be honest, I think he was the best match. To be honest. Yeah. yeah possibly. Yeah. Like that, I could see that debate. McTominay. Yeah, you know, honestly, I thought McTominay was non-existent pretty much. You know, I don't know if he's tired or, you know, he picked up early knock also. You know, he also had an early yellow card. So I don't know if that affected him, you know, because obviously you can't be as hard going in now because you got an early yellow card, like first minute. So, you know, I thought I'm going to give McTominay six, you know, played one half. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree with six. I don't think he had a horrible performance. I think the midfield in general was decent. Like his movement wasn't too bad. So I think he deserves a six. Hey, it's Christmas. I'm giving him a seven. It's Christmas. Oh, there it is. It's Christmas time. <laughs> it's Christmas time. You gotta Marcus, give him a seven. No, no like I don't think exactly. McTominay did anything that I, I spotted I was really bad, you know. Uh, and I don't think he had a great game. But I think it was it was solid enough to get us off the line, you know. At the end of the day, in the midfield, you don't need every midfielder to have a star performance. You just need, um, I know this is going to sound bad, but you just, you need one player to play well and the other one to play a supporting role, especially when you have two people as a holding pair, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think I saw McTominay play a really nice pass. I'm not sure if it was him or Pereira or both because they were really nice passes all around today. But I saw mm-hmm. one of them play really nice diagonal ball and I was like, damn. And give it this man a seven. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um, the number ten. I forgot who started. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, tough. I mean, you know, he didn't really great, but you got <laughs> the assist. But like, you know, that assist I I feel like was more Luke Shaw's he got assist. The assist. Anyway. Yeah, he got the assist and he did the, that that little flick. Yeah, to he the did side. The flick. Like, oh my god! When I saw that flick, I was like, this kid. Yeah, but you know what. I like Ooh. Pereira. I prefer Pereira over Mata and Lenka, that's for sure. So, and so yeah, I'm going to give Pereira a 7. Yeah. Uh, uh, I agree with that. I think he showed us that he's... I think he clearly showed us he better than Lenka today. Because I think we saw uh, an improvement in the 10 row. Not amazing. I think Pogba's was knocking. But there was an improvement. So... Uh, mm, six and a half. I think he deserves a six and a half. I'll give him a seven, but if I have to add my little two cents on Pereira, the thing about Pereira for me has always been, like, I feel like he's playing out of position. I feel like he should be playing in an attacking position with the amount of flair and sauce he had. No, we, you know, he struggled there. What do you mean? Oh, you like, mean in the attack roles? Yeah, he, he played on the right wing for a while and he, he struggled a lot. I think his position yeah. is the t- I think also, I agree. I think his best position is the I, 10. I don't, though, because I feel like it, this this comes down to opinion, and this is completely subjective. But if I was a manager, I wouldn't want a number 10 who's going to go for a fancy flick when I'm 1-0 down. I, I would want a number 10 who's going to go for the simple pass. You know, I wouldn't want a number 10 who's going to try drift off, get an extra touch and do some fancier shot, and then completely, you know, um, miss hit the ball. That's that's my problem with Herrera. Herrera, you know what for I, me, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not here, sorry. I was gonna say Herrera. Per, I mean, why am I saying Herrera? Pereira for me is I don't know if the right wing is his specialist position, but I think he needs to play in a more attacking position. Or if he's gonna play in the ten, he needs someone else to play in the ten with him. So like, yeah, he needs like, another box to box midfielder. He needs yeah. another box to box midfielder next to him because. With Pereira, you're hoping that he's he's back heeled, so he's Rapone crosses yeah. or these fancy Brazilian things. You're hoping yeah, yeah. that somebody's gonna see it, and then somebody's gonna get on the end of that, and that's not. And we've that's seen not, this the whole season, you know. Uh, that number yeah, ten role is left for dead. Yeah, it's it's the same as Rashford. With Rashford, Rashford's not tactics. He just he's given freedom to do his own thing. He goes for his knuckle ball shots. Mm, sometimes he scores. Mm, sometimes mm, he scores. Mm, and then mm. if he scores one. He gets mm. that's a Rashford, which is exactly what I was saying like last week when we were doing the Whiteford preview. I was saying like an attacking player only needs one moment of brilliance to change the game. And that's what I feel like Pereira is good at. Pereira is good at getting that one moment of brilliance. And 
Or number 10, you need someone who's more consistent. You need someone who's going to consistently yeah. create 10. I feel like, so if Pereira is a 10, basically what I'm saying is if Pereira is a 10, I don't think he's ready yet. And I don't think uh, he can. Yeah, I don't but, think, like, you know, I still don't think Pereira is really a Man United player yet, you know. I think, oh, I, I, I think, think he he should, should. yeah, I think he can deal with the year in the championship. But with him playing on the wing, I think the way we play today, he might survive there. But the thing is, United likes playing with a lot of pace. And a lot of Premier League teams like playing a lot of pace. He just doesn't have that pace for the wing. So maybe on a, in a team that's possession-based, he could survive there with his, his, with his flair. But remember, also, you could also, like, this is getting a bit more tactical, like, um, and I know we're going off topic, but if Pereira plays on the wing, or if he starts on the wing on the team sheet, he doesn't necessarily have to stick to that goal. You could mm-hmm. do like a plus nine type thing where the person in the middle, let's say it's Greenwood, for example, just drifts off to the right and Pereira goes down the middle. You could uh, do that sort of with your tactics. Like it, it's not, it doesn't have to stay on the right wing the whole game. Uh, and we we, we kind of tried that, but it was with Lingard. So <laughs> he's not the best supporter. You see. Uh, yeah. Anyways, moving on to uh, the right wing. Was it Greenwood is on the right wing, I think? Jeez. Yeah. Let me not say what I was going to say. But my man, fuck. Can this guy <laughs> get any better? The guy pulled out a rocket off a shot. I don't know it. You know, yes, with the press, obviously worked great. And then I, you know, I was even thinking before he took that shot, I'm like, cut in, wander off a left foot, watch this. Rocket, bang, <laughs> go. I was like, yes, that's my boy. That is my boy. <laughs> Does it every week. This is why he needs to play. <laughs> I just think the office, yeah, you know, Greenwood, he deserves it, you know, this kid deserves everything. I'm going to give Greenwood an 8. Yeah. And I no, think he's think... only going to get better and better. Yeah, and yeah no, I think he's going to be a world-class player. He, he's, he's really talented. Like, come to was saying, like, he's, he's good at both feet. He, he's amazing. That finish was, was fantastic. Yeah. And hold-up was also pretty good. It was like having two Martials on the pitch, so. Yeah, that's what yeah. it looked like. I was like, wait, was that Martial first? I'm like, no. And then I seen the I seen the cut into the left. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it comes. Bang. Uh, so I think I think I'll, I'll give him a seven. Yeah, I, I heard Shoni like extended his contract to Greenwood FC, so he's not allowed to talk <laughs> bad about it. But yeah, yeah I, I look, you know, because I gave Aaron Wambasaka a nine, I think I'm gonna give Greenwood a nine as well because I don't think he really did much wrong, and because he's an attacker. I have I, I treat him differently. Plus, I feel like you know his goal made it safe. Like now, okay, now we're safe. You know, we know we can't concede anything. You know, it put some stability into the game. Oh, he's copying the Peter Drew line. It's looking <laughs> safe now, dude. Anyways, um, yeah, I agree, man. I agree. I think uh, Greenwood is. Uh, I think he's a world class talent. He's not a world class player, but he's got the world class talent. He's got the makings of a world class player. He just yeah. needs to find the consistency and develop and grow into yeah. the star that we are seeing mm. in little cameos. Yeah. The the well, he today needs... he starts. So we see. I think he needs to start more. Though. He needs to start more to you know, show the world what he's made of. Like I feel like yeah. it's unfair. Maybe not always, but like it's mm. unfair that he's performing like this. He's not getting. He's only getting like one or two starts. He needs to. He needs to share that world with Ten James. Yeah, and I know because I'm Greenwood FC, you know, this this might come out a bit wrong. But I feel like, you know, Greenwood is 18 and now he's doing the bits. And what I like about Greenwood is though he keeps his head down, he stays humble, you know. He didn't become like a Lengard when he came on the scene. Now he's blowing up and now he becomes this player. And like Rashford, who thinks he's freaking Ronaldo and Mr. United, you know. I think like Greenwood, you know, keeps his head down, you know, he does his job. And, ah, he's such a wonderful player. Yeah, like I don't, I don't want to drift off topic, but... What does it mean for Greenwood if we sign Sancho? Because it's clear that we won Sancho. What does it mean for Greenwood if we sign Sancho? I mean, they're, the, I they're not that far, age-wise, not that far apart. Yeah, but I, I still think, you know, we shouldn't play Greenwood on the right team. I still want him in the middle. I, but... Yeah, firstly, I don't think we should be playing Greenwood on the right, firstly. But secondly, I don't think it means anything. Like, if Greenwood is the world-class talent that you guys are saying he is, it won't matter who comes to the club. He'll I'm punch in. I said this yeah. when Marcus was gone. I said, this is still not good enough. You know, I don't care if we had to sign freaking Ronaldo for, for the argument's sake. And that left wing and Rashford gets his position dropped. I want to see this club succeed. So I, I honestly it's don't like, care. If someone's better, like, they're better. 
I, I don't get why people, you know, like, I, I think honestly, it's a silly question. Like, I'm not saying that your uh, what you're trying to bring up is silly. Like it, it is good to think about what will happen, but I'm talking about the Greenwood FC fans, the Martial FC fans, the Rashford FC fans who go like, "Oh, I don't want to sign this player because what if it means Martial gets benched? So what? Exactly. Exactly. If he's better, he's better. You need depth yeah, also. Yeah, he's better, better. You know what? So, if the freaking Martial gets injured, then what? Then it's a shot. It's a silly notion. If Greenwood is as good as people say he is, he will shine. And also, to add my two cents onto your point, like, yeah, it probably is a good idea to start Greenwood more, but at the same time, he is still young. And uh, he won't play well every game unless he's the next Kylian Mbappe. And even Mbappe doesn't play at 100% every game. So... I think there's no harm in bringing him on off the bench and then giving him a start every three or four games because at the end of the day, this guy's 18. He's going to have plenty of time to shine. Like, trust me, this one season of him not starting is not going to make a huge difference in his career. I can, I can promise agree with, you. I can agree with that opinion, but I don't know if I... No, I can accept that opinion, but I don't know if I agree with it. I feel like... The, the level he's performing at, he's proven that he deserves to start. Yeah, you but know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, you know, my opinion is like, yeah, uh, MC. I'm there. You know, you have to be good enough. You're old yeah. enough. My boy, play every game. Fuck it. Let's see. We'll say that. But we've seen this time and time again. Like, football fans don't learn. We've seen this time and time again. Oh, give him a start. He's proven he's good enough. And then you go and throw the kid in the deep end. And, you know, but it's happening. Is, so. you, took, you got to start today. And, boy, you took it. Uh, he took... I know, I know. I, I agree. Greenwood is a world-class talent. He's not a world-class player yet. He's a world-class talent. But this is still his first season. I think people who think Greenwood is just going to, you know, like starting him is the key to kickstarting his career. Like you're being no, yeah, yeah. It's not that black and white. I still want to see balance simple. between him and James. Yeah. Yeah. He is going to yeah. continue playing there. So uh, I, I really... Ridiculous. Yeah. But anyway... And I think so James will definitely play the next game. But yeah, let's move on. Um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony, in the middle. Oof, oof, in the you know, all, all you guys out there who have martial agendas. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> My boy showed you today. Yeah, they're gonna talk. Go back in your bush, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> now I was going to give him a 10 out of 10 performance today. I'm also Martial FC, you know, renewed my contract today. But, you know, I felt so sad. You know, I was like thinking when was the last time I seen a hat and I think it was Latan. But yeah, I, I want him to get the hat trick. But I'm going to give Martial 9 out of 10, man of the match today for me. Hold up was great. Scored two goals. You know, he did that thing where he got the, we got the pass on the edge of the box. And I was like, here it comes. Martial finesse, special. And he goes in. And I was like, there it is. There it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give him a 9.5 out of 10. Jeez. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I think. Yeah, sorry, Kara. Sorry. No, no, no. You can go. Oh, no, no, I wasn't going to say anything. Hold up was amazing, movement, finishing, like he was perfect. So I'm going to give him an 8 to stay, to stay consistent in my ratings. It's my highest rating, uh, but I think he was one of the match. He was, he was flipping amazing. Yeah. yeah. And plus, I, I, I have to sense last week, Lengard had that same opportunity and he bottled it. Today, <laughs> Martial showed how you finish that goal. When you're in that position, that's how you finish it. Honestly, when yeah, I saw Lengard do that, uh, the first thought that that was like uh, every fiber in my body was just like, why would you go for the trip, Nakai? Who do you think you are? He this doesn't even stop. have the confidence to do this. That's the thing. Have <laughs> 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 proof that you could pull um, it off? He had like, the confidence, I but I don't uh, think he had the, the evidence, like you're saying. Listen, oh. I don't think it was an easy finish. I'll defend him there, but I think Chip was the wrong decision. Like, in that uh, situation, why are you being pressured by defenders? Listen, at the keeper, listen, that's what they tell you. Listen, at the if, Lingard, if Lingard tries, to, sorry for cutting you off, but if Lingard tries to place that in the bottom right corner and he misses, or if Lingard tries to pass it past the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper saves it, I forgive him. Yeah, yeah I would have forgiven him. A chip. A chip. Oh, you, a chip. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, you this guy needs, he needs a break, guys. Please, please, just send him away. Please. I know he's got personal stuff and everything, but this man is not a baller. He wasn't. He hasn't been a baller for years. You know, to pack his bags. That felt like that. That 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 attempt at a chip feels like when we're one 0 down and you see Pereira going for some shot from forty <laughs> yards out. 
Yeah. And you're just scratching your head like, my guy, like, did you really think there was a higher chance of you scoring that than just passing? Hmm. Like, yeah, but you know, we still have to come to learn that also. Yeah, so let, me, let me save my, my, my further thoughts until we come to. Anyways, yeah, the left wing, Marcus Rashford. Now, I don't know if people are going to hate me for this, but, you know, I don't know. People might think I have an agenda against Rashford, but yeah. <laughs> Ish. And besides just scoring the header, which is on a plate, you know, I didn't really think my boy had anything. His IQ is non-existent. You know, he gets the ball, he shoots. That, 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 that's, that's Marcus Rashford. He makes that run, he shoots. Never puts in a pass. You know, does, that doesn't drove a pass people often successfully. He thinks he's Ronaldo. He thinks he's a right, basically. You know, I that's think someone needs, to, and someone needs to go tell him, like, listen, my boy, you know Ronaldo. Yeah, you're not him, first of all, right? Second of all, come back down to it because you are not I, I, you know, I talent yet. I disagree. I disagree completely. Most of Rashford's goals this season have become have come from individual brilliance. Rashford wouldn't be the player he is right now if he wasn't given the freedom to play. But off how the many level. more goals would United have if this guy put in a pass? Um, you know, um, I think that would be Marcus Rashford. We've seen Rashford playing down the middle and trying to put in a pass, and he failed. That's not what Rashford's good at. Rashford is brilliant at playing off the left and cutting on the inside and scoring mm. goals. That's why he's in the form he's in. We've seen Rashford try to play down the middle and do the whole Martial thing. It didn't work. We have evidence of it. Just rewind. Like, go watch United at the beginning of the season. I, I disagree like, completely. Yeah, like, I think the amount of times he does it, it's clear that he's been told to do that. I think Ole's yeah. told him, go for it. Go for it and create chances. So, Ole's I think with that, he himself needs to improve his football IQ. But, like, I can appreciate it because it is... No, I appreciate it also. You know, it's exciting. But, like, I really want him to develop more. Yeah, I also want him to develop more. And it would be great if he did... I I was bashing Rashford and James in the last episode because they were making stupid decisions going forward. But the thing about Marcus Rashford is he's one of those players, right? Like, I'm going to make a weird analogy. He's one of those players, like... When you're playing the player career, right, and you're given specific instructions and you ignore them, but you still score the goal and the CPU can't take you off because it's like you've done everything wrong except <laughs> put it in the back of the net. It, you know, yeah. it's like one of those things. It's like in FIFA when, you, when you're the manager of a club and you ignore the youth development, you ignore the shirt sales, you ignore everything, you ignore the transfer budget, but you win every, every trophy. And the, the CPU is just there like, yeah, they should. Yeah, like, you know, if he puts it in, he puts it in, you know, so it is. But, you know, I feel like he needs to be, become more consistent until I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say Rashford's a Ronaldo. I'm not going to say Rashford's as consistent as he could be. But I, I think the reason why Rashford is the way he is, is it's... And it, I'm only going to be hard on Rashford because I want to see him get better. You know, it's tough yeah. enough. I, I can get behind that. But, you know, you can't force a player to play a way that's not them, you know, like Rashford isn't that kind of player. I don't think Rashford's ever been that kind of player. And maybe it's an English thing, you know, because, you know, the English players IQ, generally speaking, is not as good as you. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> that, that is an of an agreement. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Look at Martial. This look at and then look at the suffer. They suffer. Look at James. He just runs. He's so <laughs> so Look at Long. Pass, are you like, yeah. When I, mean, I watch yeah. Vince, I'm like, what? what? Why does the other team just play? You know, some of this. You know how many foreign players Liverpool have, and look at how well they're doing. You know how many foreign wow. players. No, oh, this is going to dangerous territory. Crazy, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, you get the Brexit FC fan, and then you get us, you know, but we're international, you know, we're Africa. You know, this is our view you now. I think this. <laughs> There's three players that came off the bench. If I'm not mistaken, it was Lingard, Mata, and Pogba. So, yes. like, well, we didn't give Rashford's rating. Oh, shit. Oh, Sorry. yes, yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm going to give Rashford a seven. He's got the goal. GG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also, agree. I also agree with the seven. I think <laughs> his game wasn't too bad. It was, it, it was tidy, and he's got a goal. So, seven. It's Christmas. Here it comes. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. I, I gave, I gave Greenwood a seven, so I can't Damn. give. Him. <laughs> <laughs> you gave Greenwood a seven. That's so, yo, know, that's harsh. So oh, I, I gave, feel like... be, because he scored, I gave him a six and a half. Okay. 
<laughs> Imagine, the guy scored a goal, he gets a 6.5. He's just trying to be consistent with his ratings. Yeah, okay. no, I get it, I get it. Uh, I'll give Rashford an 8, because, like, I don't think he was perfect. But at the same time, he did score a goal. So, you know, and that's and his Chris, job. And it's so Chris. He did his job. I don't know. If it, if it was, if I was in, you know, I think with Rashford, it's hard to be in, like, it, it's hard to give him a nine because, like, he didn't really do anything else, like, besides scoring that goal. He didn't really do anything else. But the I thing is, that, right, that, that, listen, okay, here's the thing. If I'm going to give Greenwood a nine for scoring that goal and doing a bit off the ball, like, come on, we have to be fair. Like, yes, you can argue that Greenwood's goal was better than Rashford. We can argue till the cows come home that. But a goal is a goal, and they both scored one. So, you know, I feel like they have to be in close proximity in terms of rating. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, onto the bench. Pogba, Lingard. Oof. Oof. You know Pogba. You know Pogba. <laughs> he was having such yes. a good game until Oli put him in defensive mid. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, Pogba had two early shots. I'm like, yeah, Pogba is going to get something. You know, an assist or a goal or something. And then he went... Back, he went so far back. I thought he was playing center back. I was like, wait, what? Maguire was even higher than him. I'm like, wait, what's going on here? I'm afraid. I, I, don't like, what's really going know, on here? I don't really know how to rate players who come off the bench, though, because I feel like I didn't see. But you know what? I didn't feel like Pogba was below average. I don't think he was above average. So I think Pogba gets a fair six. I hope he starts the next game in the number 10. Please, in the number. <laughs> or if you're playing two box to box, out the dream is box to box. But if you're going to stick with this formation, play him in the 10. You know what I think. Mm-hmm. You know, what I, you know what I think. The real dream is, well, mm-hmm. you know, and then a lot of people disagree with me on this because, like, a lot of people, you know, want to keep the Fred McTominay domination. I think drop McTominay because no, 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 by drop I don't mean take him off the team sheet. I mean drop him into CDM, right? And then play Fred and Pogba next to each other, box to box. Yeah, the box. That's yeah. the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Because McTominay... Right. Oh, you went here for the... You know, McTominay. He wasn't here. He left us. Because in the in the match preview, I was even showing Molota. I made two lineups. Uh, what I, I predicted Ali was going to make and what I think... I, what I would play. And I played Fred and Pogba in the two box box. Yeah. I think yeah. McTominay doesn't really have the attacking qualities to be... No. But he's solid at the back. I think he's more aggressive than Fred Depp. So he's better. And he's great in the build-up. But like, it's just in the final third where I don't yeah. rate McTom. Yeah. Mm. You need that scruffy uh, player there at the back. In the DC, DC well, oh, oh, by the way, by the way, my rating for Pogba is going to be a six as well. Mm. Um, okay. Really okay. Before I get to Pogba, formation-wise, like I agree with the two box-to-box and uh, holding. But you know... I'm going to go back to Marcus' argument. I feel like McTominay is more aggressive, but in terms of posi- positioning and intelligence-wise, I think Fred's better, to be honest. So, yeah, I'll leave that there. But with Pogba, I think off the ball, he was horrible. On the ball, he was fantastic. So I'll give him a six and a half, because on the ball, he was, he was hitting those long balls, he was running forward. It, it, he, was, he was pretty good. I think that proves yeah. an eight or ten, but not a six. Defensively, he was pretty shit, to be honest. So yeah, he does, he just, we should not be playing this guy so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Six and a half. Okay, Jesse. Lingard. <laughs> Man, when, when Lingard came on, game died. Game was finished. Man went, pack his bags, <laughs> get out the stadium, go home, you know, take a shower, reflect on my life and reflect on United. Man killed that <laughs> game, fam. Oh my God. Came on, Pogba went back. I was like, yeah, GG. Nothing happened. <laughs> I don't know what I'm rating. Like, what do you do? I'm going to give Lingard a two, man. Yeah, hey, this guy did not I don't know what I'm rating. It's not a bench because, like, they only have a certain amount of time to play. And it's like, if they didn't do anything, how can you rate them? Like, I, I can't give Jesse a rating. Yeah. Or no. Matt. Yeah. Like, I didn't see enough. I can't I give Matt a rating. Yeah, he came up with the show. If hey, I give Jesse Matt, a like a five. Matt's movement was too bad. Yeah, like a five. We saw Matt's intelligence here and there. Yeah. Meta has got a goal. Or got an assist, but like. <laughs> now I'm going to be rating him on touches. Come on. Yeah. Meta you know, gets a five. Yeah. Remy Lenka gets lower than a five because uh, when he came on, he killed the game. Even when he had the ball, it was like, yeah. 
Like, just I'm please not gonna, take off one of them. I feel like he did nothing wrong, but he did. He didn't really do much to influence the game in a way that changed it drastically, if that makes sense. And that's not his fault. He just didn't have time. So, like, and like, you know how it is when you come off the bench. If your team's died off in the second half, then it's like, ah, oh, dogs. Yeah. yeah. Like, what do players get in FIFA when they come on but don't touch the ball? Oh, yeah. oh. Game? I play PES, but you know, fine. Um, do, do they get a fifth? It, it's usually, no, no. it depends. It depends because in FIFA there's a lot of things that put your rating. So if the player stays in position and stays in formation, they'll get like a six. Really? On the top. Yeah, because okay, in yeah. FIFA your rating goes up if you stay in your position. Like if you actually stay in position, like you follow your instructions. Okay, no, Lingard will get that rating. <laughs> Just while we're on that, because this podcast has been all over the, all over the place, you know, and, and it's Christmas. I would like to say that, that I, I appreciate that about FIFA because in pairs it seems like it pays no attention to the things you do off the ball. Like I've noticed in pairs, if you don't score or you don't get an assist, the AI doesn't care about your life and what you contribute to the team. <laughs> in FIFA, you get rewarded for hard work, for intelligent movement off the ball. It like you get rewarded for so much. In pairs, it's just like, did, did you score? Did you get an assist? Okay, sorry, bro, six, <laughs> five, five. If you if you played badly, and the rotating close together, it's weird. Hmm. But anyways, um, do leave a like on the video. Do subscribe. It's been all over the place. Um, it hasn't been that serious because it's Christmas vibes, you know, Boxing Day vibes. So um, yeah, I think it's been a good show. Um, I've enjoyed it. I think you lot have okay. enjoyed it as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's nothing else to be said. So. Uh, Please uh, do get engaged in the comments down below, and we will catch you in the next one. Peace. All is it the way? So, listen to this money.